What's up YouTube, Jeff back again today, another very exciting Samsung video for you guys, and today we're going to be giving to seven essential apps for your Galaxy S24 Ultra. Now these apps are contained inside Samsung's own Goodlock Suite, which is an add-on module with a bunch of different apps uh, made by Samsung. So if you don't know what that is, if you have a Samsung phone, you're new to Samsung, I'm going to tell you about that as well today. Before we get started, I do want to thank my son Jonathan, he always gives us some dinos to hang out. We got the T-Rex, and also a sea creature this time, we got the dolphin, the gray and pink dolphin, we always appreciate him very much for giving us some for the video. Also want to remind you, if you want to save some money on your wireless service, you can do so by switching to my partners over at Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile has premium wireless, and right now they have unlimited premium wireless, which is $15 a month for a limited time. Now, Mint has a number of different plans. I've talked about them on the channel quite a few times. 5 gig plan, 15 gig plan, 20 gig plan, and the aforementioned unlimited plan. For a limited time, all their plans have gone $15 a month, which means the unlimited plan is currently 50% off until this offer actually expires. Now, if you're interested in taking advantage of this, all their plans have a limited talking text, nationwide coverage, mobile hotspot included as well. I've been using them in the Phoenix area for quite a while and really enjoy the service. The great thing about Mint is you can get either an eSIM if you don't wanna wait for the physical SIM to come or a physical SIM if you want it. Pop out your old SIM, pop in the Mint SIM, let the savings begin. If you wanna check it out, go to trymintmobile.com slash bringer. Limited time offer, like I said, so hurry if you wanna take advantage of it. The link trymintmobile.com slash bringer will also be in the pinned comment description. I do appreciate men for being partners on the channel. So let's go ahead and get right into the video. I've got the little Google Keep Notes list here that I always have to remind me of which apps I wanna cover. Uh, Home Up is gonna be the first one, but before you dive into these apps, if you're new to Samsung, you wanna download the GoodLock module. The way you do it, you go into the Galaxy Store on your Samsung Galaxy S24, go in here, search, tap in GoodLock here, just search GoodLock, hit enter, you'll find it right there. Now, when you do see the GoodLock module there, you'll see that this is made by GoodLock Labs, but that is a subset of Samsung America. So there's no, or Samsung as a corporation in general, not just Samsung America. It is a software division within Samsung, and so it is safe to install. It's not a third party. Once you hit open, you're gonna be greeted with two different sides here, Makeup and Life Up. And there's a bunch of different apps that you can get on both sides. Makeup is basically a collection of apps that allows you to customize your device with icon packs, um, custom menus, colors, etc., and I'm going to cover some of those today, starting with Home Up. Life Up allows you to have a better quality of life while using your device by changing some of your sound settings, uh, changing some of the way that you trigger apps. Uh, it improves your camera with Camera Assistant, and also allows you to use your phone in a better way, one-handed. So the one I want to start with is Home Up. It's actually over here on the makeup side. If you don't have the app installed, you can tap over here to go ahead and install it. Go to the store and install it. I've already installed all these modules myself. Once you install HomeUp, HomeUp lets you do a number of things. The first thing you can do is customize some of your home screen settings in a little bit deeper way. You can customize the grid in a little bit deeper. Choose your favorites max count. Control the background blur and the background color control. Hide the app icon label if that's something that bothers you. And choose to loop through your pages for your different home screens, which is one of the features I like to turn on. The other one is folders. You can change your pop-up folder and folder grid settings if you want that. You can go in here and do backup and restore, backup and restore layout. I usually don't worry too much about that because I like to change it up every time I set up a new device. Share manager, you can choose which toggles are actually shown when you share something, uh, like which apps are gonna come first, like Twitter, etc. cetera. And uh, you can show quick share devices first. And you can also favorite your you know, direct share which one you want to share directly, I can choose a contact to be the preferred person to share to, and that'll be the default. Down here is one of my other favorites, which is the task changer. I can actually choose the task changer layout. So that's the layout that you get. Of course, I triggered Google there. You, when you swipe up and hold, you get this layout here. You can change this to different things. Grid, you can change it to stack, you can change it to vertical list, and slim list. Now, my personal favorite is Grid. That's the one that I usually go with, but you can use any of the ones that you want. You can also show the label of the app, search bar, recommended apps, and then down here with gesture settings, you can choose to switch to previous app with gestures, allow bottom gestures in, free, in full screen mode, gesture top priority, and bottom gesture sensitivity. So lots of stuff you can do within Home Up. The one thing that they did remove in a past update was the ability to have a vertical app list. Of course, I'm talking about if you go into your app drawer, there used to be the option to go ahead and have this scroll vertically instead of horizontally. They did remove that recently, which is unfortunate, but I'm hoping it'll be back in a future update. So let's go back into Good Lock. Let's check out the next one on my list here. We went through Home Up, 
Theme Park is the next one. Theme Park is also over here on the makeup side, at the very top here. What Theme Park allows you to do is to install custom icon packs on your device, as well as set up other various customization options. Start, allow all, and then it'll access all of these. Now, the reason it needs access to those is that you can customize not only your own theme here, but your keyboard, quick panel, icons, and volume panels within here. Some of these other ones have separate apps within Goodlock that allow you to dig a little deeper. I'm actually gonna show you Sound Assistant would let you dig into the sound panel a little bit deeper, so I'll show you that in a second. And then Quick Panel, there's another Good Lock module called Quick Star that has a few more customization options. What I really like to use this for is I like to use it for installing custom icon packs. So I'll show you guys the way it works. If you go into the Play Store, find yourself a custom icon pack. Now, my favorite icon packs come from 1.4 Studio, who's a good friend of mine. So I can act, you know, recommend Vera Icon Pack and all of its kind of subsidiaries. He has a whole bunch of different versions if you search the Play Store. Once you install one, so this is the one I'm gonna install, Vera Icon Pack, Shapeless Icons. I'll drop a link below if you wanna check it out. Once it's installed and you go back to Theme Park, so if I come back over here to Theme Park, once I do that, I'm then gonna be able to go to Create New here. And then when I go to Create New, I'll then be able to choose by tapping on Icon Pack the icon pack I installed called Vera. Now, once Vera is chosen, I can then see a preview of the icons and choose the shape for the non-themed icons down here. And once I'm happy with that, up here I can click the save button and I can call it Vera one and save it. And then it's going to go ahead and install this icon pack. Now, when you want to apply it, you come back to the home screen, you tap on this and then go to apply and it's going to apply this to all the icons on your device. This is something you can't do with your iOS phone. You see all these icons now, all my icons changed to the icons that are in the Vera icon pack. I personally think they look a lot nicer than the stock icons. Of course, you can find an icon pack that's suitable for you, but this is mainly what I tend to use the theme park application for, is for changing my icon pack. Now, again, I'm gonna come back to keyboard quick panel and volume panel because those have their own separate modules within Goodlock that can dig a little bit deeper. So let's go ahead and go back to the Goodlock modules. Go ahead and check off Theme Park. Keys Cafe, speaking of which, is the next one I want to talk about. This module is specific for setting the keyboard optimized for you and creating your own personal theme. So when you enable Keys Cafe, there's a couple things you can do. The first thing, and of course I just swiped away my Keep document, the first thing you can do is make your own keyboard. If you tap on this, it'll allow you to go in here and choose various pre-made keyboards um, from Simple, Dvorak, Colmec, Simple Keyboard, Math Keyboard, Chemistry, if you use some of these for your classes. Or you can tap on here and just choose to edit the keyboard yourself and choose exactly which keys go where. Now this can take a long time to customize, but if you do type in a very specific way and there's some keys that you use a lot, it's a very good idea to go through and fully customize this. The more appealing thing probably for most people is this option, style your own keyboard. If you're okay with the standard layout, but you wanna add a little effect, a little pizzazz to your keyboard, you can go in here and choose one of these keyboards. It'll apply this to your keyboard theme. And then you can also apply various effects to the keyboard as well. If you go over here, you can apply a keyboard color effect. They got a bunch of them like splatter, vibrate, They've added so many over the years. And then you can also add the key color effect and the key motion effect down here as well. So you can choose kind of how it looks. It'll show you a little preview at the top of what it's gonna look like. You can also even choose this to kind of see which colors are going to be used in the effect. They've done so much customization of this over time. You can tap the button at the top to kind of play around with it and see what your customization looks like. And again, you can choose a theme that's suited to you and you don't have to necessarily theme it directly with your wallpaper. Now, if you wanna theme it automatically with your wallpaper and do all that, Theme Park and some of the AI features will do that, but this is mainly if you wanna take control of your keyboard and customize it fully on your own. You can also create your own stickers down here, play keyboard games and choose some advanced keyboard settings like longer spacebar while URL typing, auto replacement sensitivity, turn off delete accelerator, double tap interval of three by four keyboards and use sticker suggestions in larger view. That's one that I do like to turn on. The other one's not something that particularly appeal to me, but it's good to know about them so you can go through and kind of get what works for you on a personal level. Now, the next one, and of course, like I said, I close my document here. Let me go back and tap off Keys Cafe. 
The next one is One Hand Operation Plus. So let's go ahead and get my pop-up back here. For those of you who are new to Samsung, pop-up windows, very, very useful when you're doing any sort of multitasking on your device. Like for instance, making this video, it's a very good thing to have this and just kind of use it as you go. One Hand Operation Plus is over here on the Life Up side and One Hand Operation Plus allows you to enable two handles on the left and right of your device, which you can then map to custom settings and custom triggers. If you turn this on, it's gonna show you the left and the right handle here. And what it will basically allow you to do is to set various actions to those handles. So what I usually do is on the left handle, obviously straight right, I wanna make it the back key because otherwise it's kind of confusing. Diagonal down and diagonal up, I usually set these to back and recents, which are the default. But what I usually like to turn on myself is the long swipe because this is easier to not trigger by accident. If you do the short swipe, it's easier to accidentally trigger it, and I don't wanna do that. When I do straight right, what I usually do is either quick tools or I use the widget pop-up. So I'll show you what both of them do. Quick tools is the one I'm gonna do straight right. Quick launcher, I'll do diagonal up. And diagonal down, I will do the widgets pop-up menu. So now when I go back to my home screen and I do a long diagonal down swipe, it's gonna give me a pop-up window where I can add some pop-up widgets. Now you can add a number of different widgets here. You can add whatever it is that you're interested in. And you can have a whole bunch of these widgets here on these pages. You can add additional widgets as you go, device care. You know, I could even add my keep notes widget here if I wanted, etc. I could put this here as well. And I could choose, for instance, all notes. And then it'll put it right there, right below on the next page. Now you do have to be careful with the sizes because of course, if some of them don't line up, you might not be able to have multiple widgets on the same page, but you can add as many pages as you want. And then, like I said, those will be triggered when you do that diagonal down long swipe, which is a nice thing. Now, if I do the straight right long swipe, it enables quick tools, which gives me access to a bunch of my quick settings. And if I do the diagonal up long swipe, I get quick launcher, which gives me all of my recent apps. They use AI to kind of determine which ones you're using the most. And that's kind of how I like to use One Hand Operation Plus. Now, there's a lot of other things that you can actually dig into when it comes to One Hand Operation Plus. If we go back in here, you can map obviously the left and the right. So there's a lot of other things that you can do. Some of the other options that I enjoy personally, the virtual touchpad, the floating nav buttons, you can change your modes and routines now by using the mode switch. This was in a recent update that I actually just made a video about. You can change the size, touch width and position of the handles, and you can even change the handle color if you would like to do that. Down here in advanced settings, you can use app exceptions, S pin gestures, fit to keyboard, choose what to do in landscape mode. It's literally kind of unlimited what you wanna do. Even customize your gestures down to the vibration intensity, which just shows you how much attention to detail Samsung has in their Good Lock apps and One Hand Operation Plus. So that's One Hand Operation Plus. Let's now go back to Good Lock again and take a look at Nodistar. So Nodistar, which again is on this side over here, Life Up. What Nodistar does, once you press start, and you tap on activate Nodistar, what this does is it basically allows you to get a little uh, drawer that keeps track of all of your notifications. You can choose how long you want to have them notify at the bottom, and you can get this little icon on your lock screen that allow you to swipe up and see your notifications. Let me just make sure I don't have any very sensitive notifications here, and then I'll show you guys what this looks like on the lock screen. If I go back to the lock screen, you see here, swipe up for Nodistar, this arrow, this arrow will allow you to swipe up. And as soon as you put in your pin, you'll be able to go right into Nodistar and get your information. Do make sure that when you go in here that you have the applications list and enable all the apps that you want to use Nodistar with. You can also filter which icons appear here. And in terms of the icon settings, you can also choose the start icon and make it something different than just this arrow. It doesn't have to be an arrow. You can choose a custom one. You can also choose, in fact, just like a lot of things in Good Lock, you can choose a custom color as well. This other button at the bottom allows you to set it up so that some app notifications can't be cleared. So if there's something like Gmail that you wanna be able to go back and review later, you don't wanna clear it on accident, you can turn this on uh, and then choose that from the list and it will no longer clear that notification as you go. So you can actually see here, I just got a notification that my S24 Ultra from Samsung US just shipped. And so as you can see, that showed up in Nodistar now that it's there, and I'll be able to review this for as long as I have the storage period saved. All right, we're making it through the list here. The next one is sound assistant, and then the last one is camera assistant. 
So if we go back in here to good lock, let's uh, swipe back a couple. Sound assistant, which is also on the life up side, allows you to customize a lot of things with regard to sound settings, in particular, some of the colors and of the equalizer and some of the settings of the equalizer. One of my favorite ones is this one, change the step volume. So instead of having your volume go up in increments of 10, when you use the volume rocker over here, you can change this. And what I like to do is set it to five. And then this is only gonna go up in increments of five. So it goes up a lot slower. It's nice to find the granular volume that's perfect for your listening habits. And it makes it easier to use and listen to music on your phone. You can also change individual app volumes here. You can add particular apps so that you control the individual app volumes one at a time. Customize your volume panel, which then allows you not only to change what is shown here, like for instance, the floating button can be shown. You can also show what the expanded pen, uh, panel looks like and turn on Bluetooth metronome. You can tap on some of these things and kind of see what's going to appear as you're working. You can also change the volume panel colors. And there's some really cool ones. You can change, you know, this look, you can see the gradient look, uh, kind of this lighting effect that's vibrating. If you turn that on, the flex volume UI, you can then change the theme over here as well. If you want to have more of like a solid theme, then you can do that as well. And as I mentioned before, this actually installs with theme part. So as you go through and decide how you want to have this show up, and I'll show you what it looks like here, over there, you can kind of see if I expand it, look at that beautiful theme volume panel, which does in fact kind of match my wallpaper a little bit in this particular case. A lot of other things you can do in here, media manner mode, when your phone's set to vibrate, mute media volume is also muted. Control music with volume keys, which is obviously, I don't like that, but it's a cool feature to have. You can go forward and backwards. Turn on your favorite media app. So if you have a specific one, I use Spotify. That way it controls Spotify from there and it's the default. Some nice uh, advanced settings too. Customized vibration hall, uh, vibration uh, pattern and alerts through headphones, which is a very, very useful thing to have. You can turn on your ringtone to actually hear through the headphones. So sound assistant is definitely one of my favorites. Not only can you customize some of the theme stuff that goes along with the volume panels, but also some very useful things like changing the step size of the volume itself. The final thing is camera assistant. And this is something that is now embedded inside the camera app. It was originally actually a good lock module for those who don't know. And so you can still access it within good lock if you tap it. It takes you directly to your camera because it's now embedded in the camera settings. But there are a lot of things here that you'll want to check out. For instance, the zoom shortcuts, you can now turn on 2x and 10x and 100x as well here. Remember, this is not optical zoom for 10x because now it's uh, this AI zoom for 10x, but you can choose it on there as a shortcut. Auto HDR, picture softening, off, medium, or high. Auto lens switching, I hate this, so I always turn it off. Distortion correction, I do think that's a pretty useful thing. High resolution, adaptive pixel. If the resolution decreases due to zoom, upscale pictures back to the resolution you select. I still haven't played with this. I'm going to at some point and let you guys know what I think. Quick tap the shutter takes pictures as soon as you touch the shutter. Um, and extra pictures also taken when you swipe or hold the shutter as usual. I usually turn this on. Prioritize focus over speed. This makes sure that you actually get an in-focus shot instead of you know having quick shutter. Um, and you know you will see maybe a little bit longer time to taking the picture if you turn this on. Video recording in photo mode, timer for multi-photos, depth of field adapter correction, automatically corrects images flipped by external depth of field adapter. This is corrections applied only in pro and pro video modes. Anamorphic lens correction, audio monitoring, camera timeout, dim screen while recording. I definitely like this. Clean preview on HDMI displays, which if you're a content creator is a great feature to have, but most other people probably won't care too much. Anyway, there's a lot of cool stuff to dig in here. I just try to give you some of my inputs on what I use and I'll probably make a more detailed camera video later on anyway. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. These are definitely seven essential apps to have. They're all inside Samsung's good lock suite of applications. And yes, I will make videos talking about the other ones. These are just the ones that I use that I feel will enhance your experience the most. I did talk about Pintastic in my S Pen tips and tricks video. So if you want to check that out, the link will be in the pin comment and description. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, like, comment, subscribe for more S24 Ultra coverage. If you want to save some money on your wireless service, consider giving my friends and partners at Mint Mobile a try. Try mintmobile.com slash Springer to sign up. A limited time deal for the $15 a month on unlimited plan. It's a very good deal. So jump on that if you're interested. Appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot.